beautiful aquatic friends welcome back to another video we're back at it in las vegas nevada and you know what i'm not too sure what the plan is for today but i'm pretty sure there's gonna be some poker there's already been some blackjack some roulette been doing pretty damn good so hopefully we run good at the poker table which i'm not sure which poker room we're gonna be ending up at it's this time during the WSOP, so the atmosphere out here is freaking awesome. If you like poker, man, this is like this is like Disneyland for poker players. Met so many great people, so many people that I admire, so many people that I follow, and I'm just having such a great time out here with good friends and good company. But before we get into poker, which, like I said, we don't know where we're going to be playing, just hit that thumbs up button. It's free. Hook a brother up. Go on and click subscribe. Hit that notification bell. That way, you're not, that way you don't miss a video. Uh, yeah, that's it. Let's let's get right into it. We end up driving to the Venetian to pick up our friend and fellow poker vlogger Andrew Locke and his girlfriend Cindy. Ay, qué guapa! <laughs> wow, there's still gentlemen that exist. Wow! That open he, always, the doors. he always opens and closes the door. Oh. After a bite to eat, we head back to the Venetian to finally play some poker. We buy in for the maximum amount of $300 at this 1-3 table, and we get to sit next to a familiar face. Oh. What is up, man? Are you up or are you down? How are you doing on this trip? Uh, tournaments down, cash up, overall up a little bit. How, how's the fund level? Fun level is all time high. Yes. This first hand of the night, an opponent in late position opens up the action to 10 bucks after everybody folds. I'm on the button looking down at Ace 10 offsuit, and just like a lawn chair, I've been folding for the past few rotations. And even though I didn't come to Vegas to be a nit, I still kind of have to play my absolute best this early in the game right now that I'm still sober. Ace 10 is my very first playable hand, so I three bet this tilapia to 30 bucks. The small blind calls the original aggressor calls as well and we go three ways to a flop of queen deuce eight with two hearts small blind leads out for 10 bucks into a 90 dollar three bet pot which is pretty standard for someone who's on a draw the late position player also makes the call and the fact that he didn't raise here combined with the fact that he didn't four bet me pre-flop makes me believe that he's not that strong either action is on me and i don't think i can get any of these two tilapias to fold on this street but i still make the call with some cruel future ideas with about hundred and twenty dollars in the pot we go three ways to see a five on the turn that shouldn't have changed anything the small blind fires yet another ten dollar bet which is kind of silly considering how much money's in the pot there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that he's on some sort of a flush draw late position player calls and i'm gonna make the call with plans on bombing any river that's not a brick another deuce on the river pairs up the board and the small blind fires off the same silly ten dollar bet late position player calls and the fact that the heart missed on a hand where the action was looser than your mom my fish instincts take over as i stick to the plan and announce that that I'm all in. I already knew the small blind player was gonna fold. I'm a little more concerned over the late position player who is a little more likely to have something here. He has about $100 left in his stack and I can literally hear his heart telling him to fold as he's in the tank longer than my Dick, yeah, take a look at a starboard. Oh my God, it looks like a huge hacker. I'm not feeling so good. I'm praying to sweet baby Jesus that this tilapia folds and after what seemed like an eternity, he ends up making the stupid call with queen four. We lose our first pot of the night when we specifically told ourselves that we were going to try to play our very best. Nice hands, sir. In this next poorly played hand, we're in middle position looking down at King 10 suited and we make it 10 bucks. It folds all the way down to the button who three bets me to 35. Now I'm not sure what kind of poor etiquette is allowed at this establishment, so I ask clarification from the dealer. Is that allowed? Is three betting allowed in this table? Yeah. Three betting is allowed in this table? Yeah. After the dealer clarifies that three betting is indeed allowed at this establishment, I make the call and we go heads up to a flop of 10 jack four rainbow. I decide to check to the original aggressor who also decides to check back. We go heads up to see a free 10 on the turn. Hell mother effing yeah. Now some of you fish might argue that my hand has improved significantly and now I'm not gonna risk him checking back. He only has about $80 behind and I only fire off a bet of 40 bucks in hopes that he either A shoves or B he's too priced in to fold on the river. He ends up just calling though and we see another four on the river. I announce that I'm all in. 
It's only 40 more dollars to him. And even though he was getting a good price to call, he still ends up making the fold. He politely asked me if he can see my hand. And even though I don't like to show my hand, I think it was a good idea that I did show him because this time I had it. Last time I went all in, I didn't have it. So I think this is a good balance for my image. Five, two, go. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay. But he's the funniest. Here you go. Here you go. I'll finish it. I'll finish it now. Finish it. Now I'm on the small blind looking down at King 10 suited. It falls all the way to my new lesbian friend on the button who min raises it to six bucks. I'm gonna make the call. The big blind is also gonna make the call and we're gonna go three ways to a flop of 10, six, four rainbow. I flop top pair with a pretty damn good kicker and since I'm first to act, I'm gonna go on and check it as I would with my entire range. The big blind checks it and when it gets back to Bria on the button, she fires off a bet of 20 bucks. Even though 20 bucks might not seem like a lot nowadays in this hand, $20 is a massive amount as there's only $18 in the pot without the rake. I'm not buying what she's trying to sell. I'm not gonna go anywhere with my top pair either, so I'm gonna make the call and we are going heads up to a mother flopping king on the turn. Now, freaking yeah, we are sitting on two pair. Action is on me and I'm gonna check it back again to Bria who doesn't let her foot off the accelerator as she bets off another 50 bucks. I ponder whether it's a good idea to repop her here or should I check the river and let her continue hang herself? I'm gonna go with option B. I make the call and we go heads up to a brick on the river. I know I said that I would check it and let my opponent continue hanging herself, but that hasn't really been working for me lately. I really, really, really don't want to lose value here and check it and have my opponent check back. Bria has only about $120 behind and I want it all. I'm all in and she calls me faster than your mom on a Saturday night and turns over pocket aces. I proudly turn over my hand and announce two motherfucking pair. The only problem with my two pair is that my dumbass didn't have two pair. I misread my stupid hand. I had king seven the entire time. Hey mom. <laughs> Man, I misread my hand. That's really embarrassing for you. It is. That's really sad. <laughs> this is my first time in a poker vlog. I just want you to know. No, you had to. Why you had to pull that in? Shit. Shit. I'm did so you, did stupid. You I should have just not said I had two pair. I should have just not said I had two pair. I could have just turned over my hand without saying anything. I mean, I would have still felt stupid knowing that I didn't have two pair, but the fact that I announced it and the whole damn table heard me say two pair, that makes me feel dumber than the time I asked the one-legged man if he worked at IHOP. Get it? I hop. Anyways, I lose a freaking massive pot. I lose my profit. I lose my chips along with losing my confidence for the rest of the night. Andrew, <laughs> why are you blushing? Are you blushing? <laughs> Turning red. I've added another $200 to my pathetic stack and in this next hand it folds all the way to my nemesis Bria who makes it 15 bucks. Action is on me on the big blind and I'm looking down at not one but two juicy aces. That's right, pocket rockets, American Airlines, the weapons of mass destruction, and it's time for vengeance versus my favorite lesbian as I repop her to 45. Bria ain't trying to have any of this Gatorade. Get it? Gay? Anyway, she folds and we don't get much value from this hand. One quick announcement, Fishes. I've partnered up with Club GG, which means that now you and I can play online together. All you have to do is click on that clickable link on the description below, which then is going to take you to this page here. This page is just a step-by-step -step instruction kind of guide that lets you know what you need to do to get this ball rolling, which basically all it means is just download the app and enter my referral code. So do that and let's see each other out, out there at the tables. Now we're in middle position looking down at these beautiful ladies. An opponent in early position makes it 10 bucks and once it folds back around to me, I'm gonna three bet this to 35. Our only customer is our early position opener and we're gonna go heads up to a magnificent flop of queen seven deuce. What a great flop for our specific hand, but since there's no real draws available, it's gonna be pretty hard to get value from anything other than a non-believing pocket pair. 
an ace high float, or maybe something like ace queen, which is already kind of unlikely since there's three out of the four queens accounted for. Our opponent checks and I fire off a bet of 20 bucks to which he calls and we go heads up to see a nine on the turn. Nothing's changed, so I'm gonna keep the bet low. I throw out a bet of 20 bucks and our opponent waves the white flag and we are gonna take this one down. One, two, three. go. Yes! Yes! <laughs> what happened? It's too bubbly. <laughs> We move seats one to the right to get a better view of the table and our next hand we're under the gun looking down at 8-9 offsuit. I limp in, five other players limp in as well and we're gonna go six ways to a flop of jack queen eight with two spades. Bria on the big blind is first to act and leads out for 10 bucks. I'm gonna make the call with my pair and straight draw the button is also gonna make the call and we're gonna go three ways to see another eight on the turn. Bria now makes it $20. A good argument could be made that I should have repopped it here, but to be honest, I'm probably not thinking as clear as I should be at the moment. I've had a few drinks already and my world is rocking when it should be rolling. I end up making just the call despite not protecting my hand versus so many draws. The button calls as well and we're gonna go three ways to see a 10 on the river. I've made my straight but the backdoor flush just got there but to be honest I'm not too concerned about that. Bria now checks it and a value bet here is definitely in order. I make it 45 bucks and our only customer is the button. I show, he mucks and we take another chunky sized pot. For this last 10 of the night, we've put a $6 straddle on the button. In many casinos, when there's a button straddle, the small blind acts first, but here at the Venetian, the under the gun player is gonna act first. It folds all the way to an opponent in middle position who raises it up to 17 bucks. He gets one collar in late position and once it's action on me, I'm not feeling so good. I'm looking down at 6-7 of clubs. As I'm thinking of what to do, the opponent in the small blind jumps the gun and puts his 17 out there, which is a great piece of information to have. Now that I know I'm not gonna get raised, I make the call and we're gonna go four ways to a flop of 3-4-9 with two clubs. The original aggressor fires off a bet of 27 bucks and once again, I'm involved in a situation where I'm being priced in with a hand that has a shit ton of equipment. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, not saying that's a bad thing, but it's such a sick sweat when you know you're potentially gonna lose a lot of money. I make the call, the small blind makes the call, and if you fishes can do me a solid and hit that like button on the count of three for some extra run good, I would forever be grateful. One, two, three. Hell freaking yeah, we turn the absolute nuts and our original aggressor now fires a small bet of 30. Action is on me and I'm gonna raise it up to 85. The small blind folds, original aggressor calls and we go heads up to see a deuce on the river. My opponent now checks and he only has about a hundred bucks behind. I'm not gonna go for it all though, I'm not gonna get greedy. I bet out 65 bucks, my opponent quickly calls and shows pocket aces. Unfortunately, that's not gonna be enough to beat my straight and we're gonna take this massive pocket down not only did we make a sick 400 dollars comeback which is a win in itself already but we managed to book a small 45 dollars profit on the session all right fishes that's all i have for you guys today hopefully you guys enjoyed it i went ahead and bought in for 300 added on for 200 and i made my money back at one point i was all the way down to a hundred dollars and 45 dollar profit after that full house that i freaking doubled up on but now i didn't know it at the time but i didn't get to record that full house hand which sucks because it was such a great one i cracked aces with four five i flopped two pair and i rivered a full house and i doubled up plus some dead money so it was a pretty pivotal hand for the rest of the night anyways vlog how did you do uh i won 1100 1100 pretty damn good anyways don't forget to like subscribe comment do all that fun stuff yeah like and subscribe to this guy. yeah do what he says i'll see you guys on the next one